here today in the new 2019 Ford Explorer, courtesy of Bob Ruth Ford in Dillsburg, PA. Reviewed it last year, wanted to check it out this year again because this is the Platinum, never been in this one. So I am excited to get started. So as always, let's start with pricing. It said there will be several different trim levels available for the 2019 Explorer. First one being the base, that is gonna start at $32,365. Then you have the XLT for $34,400. Limited is gonna start at $42,765. Sport is going to start at $46,625. And lastly, the Platinum, which we are again in today, that one is going to start at $54,165. And to go along with those choices of trim levels, you will have three different engine setups available as well, mostly specific to the trim level though. For instance, that base and XLT trim level is going to give you a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6, putting out 290 horsepower, 255 pound-feet of torque. Power is going to be sent to the front wheels, which will come standard however there is an intelligent four-wheel drive system available and mpg numbers on that one are going to come in at 17 in the city 24 on the highway but then next engine setup is going to be for the limited it's going to be optional on the base and xlt trim level that engine setup is going to be a 2.3 liter turbocharged inline four-cylinder engine that one puts out 280 horsepower 310 pound feet of torque again front wheel drive standard intelligent four-wheel drive optional mpg numbers increased on that one because it is turbo charged coming in at 19 in the city 27 on the highway but then last engine setup is going to be exclusive to the sport and platinum trim levels this is the one we have today and this one is a 3.5 liter twin turbocharged six cylinder engine putting out 365 horsepower 350 pound feet of torque power is only going to be sent to all wheels through ford's intelligent four wheel drive system giving you mpg numbers at 16 in the city 22 on the highway and a zero to 60 time of approximately 5.8 seconds but it gets better because we have paddle shifters as well so to put it in that paddle shift mode what I'm simply gonna do is put the shifter all the way to the back there and that is gonna allow me full control over the shifting here so let's test out the paddle shifters and see how quickly they react for us an ever so slight delay definitely not too bad though the acceleration is definitely on point especially for a three-row suv very nice but i guess i'm not surprised it does have a twin turbo v6 so this engine setup at least is definitely one you do not have to worry about merging onto the highway with but to go along with that acceleration braking is equally important so let's hit the brakes comes to a very quick stop. I cannot say that for all three row SUVs that I've tested, so that's definitely nice. And when it comes to handling and ride quality, it does come with an independent front and rear suspension along with hill start assist so you don't drift backwards on steep hills. Also electronic power assist steering. And by the way, when it comes to the steering feel, it does feel quite nice, not as loose as some of the other three row SUVs that I've driven, so definitely appreciate that. And probably one of the first things I noticed, especially on these PA back roads here, ride quality is very much so on point. It is definitely a very smooth ride in the Ford Explorer. I can attest to that as well. And so then to go along with that smooth ride, there's actually a little dial right behind the shifter there. You might be wondering what that's for. That is the terrain management system. That's gonna come standard on the Sport and Platinum trim levels. It's gonna be optional on the other trims, but that is actually gonna give you several different terrain management modes, so to speak, including a normal mode, which is only gonna send torque to the rear wheels when necessary. There's also a mud and rut mode, which limits upshifting and allows the wheels to spin when needed. There's a sand mode, which delivers maximum torque to the wheels and keeps the transmission in the lower gears. And there is also a grass, gravel, and snow mode, which provides faster upshifts and adjusts the engine torque slightly to improve traction on surfaces with loose materials such as gravel or snow. And yet another thing I wanted to mention, the cabin inside the Explorer, it is quite quiet. The only thing I can really hear are the air vents that I have on right now in the rear, but that is about it. There is not a whole lot of road noise making in its way into the cabin on this one. And when it comes to visibility, I have seen three row SUVs worse than this. So in my opinion, it really isn't all that bad. I would say the only thing you really have to look out for when it comes to rear visibility is if you have that third row up, those third row headrests may hinder visibility slightly. But other than that, for a three row SUV, the Explorer definitely really isn't all that bad. But enough with the driving dynamics you guys let's check out the exterior of this new 2019 ford explorer and so then starting up front there are led headlights with automatic feature that will actually come standard on every single trim level of the 2019 explorer 
If you wanted to go with a limited trim and up, you will also get LED fog lights just below with the LED signature lighting within the front headlights as well. Looking in the center there, I did want to mention that grille design and the front bumper application will differ among the trim levels. For instance, with the sport trim level, you're going to get several more black accents throughout the exterior. And with the platinum trim level, you're going to get some more chrome accents, for example. To make your way to the side, the base trim will give you black door handles and black side mirrors. XLT will make those body color door handles. Sport trim level is going to bounce you back to black door handles and black side mirrors, but with the side mirrors, they will come heated with integrated turn signals though. Limited and platinum trim are going to give you chrome door handles and the platinum is also going to give you chrome side mirrors as well. But then for all trim levels, all trims will give you rear privacy glass, also roof rails for every single trim level. When it comes to the wheel setup, you will get 18 inch aluminum alloys for the base and XLT, 20 inch premium aluminum wheels for the limited, you will get 20 inch machined aluminum wheels for the sport and a 20 inch unique design for the premium trim level that you're looking at right now but then making your way to the back there is a rear spoiler with an integrated brake light for every single trim level just below that rear window wiper and once again for every single trim level you will get led tail lights as well so love that ford is doing the leds all the way around for all trim levels that's definitely nice and then just below it all dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips for the base xlt and limited and i put it that way because if you go with the sport or platinum trim levels you will get quad tips but dual exhaust either Either way so you guys know what i gotta do next here as always here is that exhaust clip So now, since we are around back, the way to open that rear trunk, if you go with the limited trim level and up, it is a hands-free lift gate. So it is a power lift gate. And if your hands were full of groceries or a golf bag or whatever, simply kick your foot underneath that rear bumper and it's gonna automatically open up for you again for the limited trim level and up. But once opened up, cargo capacity is gonna come in at 21 cubic feet behind that third row. But of course you can fold that third row down, bumping the cubic feetness up to 43.9, good bit of space there and with all rows folded that is going to come in 81.7 cubic feet but so then let's test out the rear legroom now this is always a fun part for me being six feet tall third row legroom is going to come in at 33.3 inches so for reference this is how much space i have back there when it comes to the second row legroom that is going to come in at 39.5 inches so again this is how much space i have back there also for the second row passengers you will find a center armrest with cup holders and that second row actually is also going to be heated if you go with the limited trim level and up but now make your way to the front seats you will find a cloth finish on the base and xlt leather finishes are going to come with the limited trim level and up also with the limited and up they will come heated and ventilated and one of the coolest parts about the front seats at least in my opinion is if you go with the platinum trim level you will get unique design elements as you guys can see the quilted leather on the sides of the seats there are also the platinum designation towards the top of them definitely a very nice looking seat i gotta say and they of course are also very comfortable in my short little driving stint that i've done today but perhaps the best part about the seats you guys is with the platinum trim level they are multi-contour front seats which means they have the massage function so both driver and passenger can not only get a back massage but a bum massage as well. So that feature typically found our Mercedes Benz is where I remember it from, but now is on the Ford Explorer. That is definitely pretty sweet. But so anyways, let's take a look up front here. There is a tilt and telescoping steering wheel that will come standard. It is gonna come leather wrapped if you go with the XLT trim level and up, and will come heated if you go with the limited trim level and up, and I am loving the wood grain accents that I have on the platinum trim level that we got here today. But I digress, let's take a look at the key here. On the one side, you have your Ford logo, and when you flip it over, lock, unlock that button to pop the rear hatch, and that remote start button as well. And by the way, that is gonna be XLT trim level and up, and once again, XLT trim level and up is gonna give you remote access with the push button start. So what I am simply gonna do is just put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee. And so, but then once started up, tachometer is gonna be on your left, speedometer is on your right. There is a fairly large digital display as well, front and center. And by the way, to control what is on that digital display, there are actually steering wheel mounted controls on both the left and the right side because there are kind of two separate digital displays within those gauges there. So a ton of information you can scroll through if you like within that but 
Make your way to overall interior quality. All trim levels are going to give you an overhead sunglass holder. Limited trim level and up is going to give you ambient lighting and a universal garage door opener as well. That's pretty nice. Twin panel moonroof is going to come standard on the platinum trim level. That's what you're looking at right now. And by the way, if you still wanted that moonroof on the other trim levels, it is available for you in case you were curious. But with this being the platinum trim level, I have absolutely no issues with interior quality. There are soft touch materials everywhere. Aluminum and wood grain accents that tie the doors into the front dash here. Also that quilted leather you found on the seats continue onto the doors as well. And I also like that the speaker design kind of ties its way into the dash a little bit as well. So I'll get more into the speakers in a second, but definitely a very nice finish to the 2019 Explorer. But now let's take a look at the tech display front and center here. I do want to mention if you go with the base Explorer or the XLT, you will get the standard sync system, which is still going to give you Bluetooth and audio streaming and a six speaker sound system. But if you go with the limited trim level and up, you will get the Sync 3 system, which is optional on the XLT, by the way. But that one is going to give you Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, meaning if you have a smartphone, you have free navigation through your smartphone that will be displayed up on that screen. By the way, it's an eight inch color touchscreen display, so it is fairly large there. Also, you have the ability to control your climate control settings up there. A factory navigation system will come standard for the limited trim level and up. And when it comes to the sound system, the limited and sport trim levels are going to give you a Sony 12 speaker sound system. And if you go with the Platinum, you will get a premium Sony surround sound system. So that's what we got going on today. So let's turn on the radio, see what we got playing this morning, and let's test out the clarity of this one. Serious amount of bass on this thing. That was ridiculous. Absolutely very crystal clear and loud. So really for a three row SUV, that sound system is definitely where it's at. And so, but then the last thing on the tech display I wanted to mention is when you do put the 2019 Explorer in reverse for every single trim level, you will get a rear view camera letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead me into safety. And so let me start on the safety side with front side and side curtain airbags, also driver and passenger knee airbags and inflatable rear safety safety belt. Don't see that one too often, so that's pretty cool as well. Also in the back though, latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Also back there, rear child door locks. You will get an auto dimming rear view mirror with a limited trim level and up. And now the more fun stuff, blind spot information system with rear cross traffic alert for the limited trim level and up forward sensing system same deal there xlt trim level it up is going to give you that rear sensing system so therefore the explorer is going to beep at you a little bit if you get too close to an object so you know not to run into that object and since we are so lucky today the platinum trim level that you are currently looking at will also give you lane departure warning with lane keep assist active park assist and an adaptive cruise control system with collision warning and brake support and so but anyways that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching be sure to like like the video and subscribe feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there and i will see you guys in the next video stay gold Kind of busy today, so what do you say? Let's go ahead and jump right into it. Right, let's check it out. And so as you guys can probably already tell, the 2021 F-150 has been completely redesigned for the 2021 model year. Every body panel has been changed for 2021, producing a fresh and extremely different look than in previous generations. So also several class exclusive features are going to be found on the 2021 F-150 that is going to definitely take you by surprise. And of course, I will be going over those for you guys in this video. And so ultimately, this is going to be an in-depth first look at the brand new 2021 Ford F-150. And of course, don't forget to subscribe for more new car reviews and first looks kind of like this one. So let me go ahead and get started with the pricing actually for the 2021 F-150. It's usually what everybody wants to know first. And Ford did just recently announce pricing for the 2021 F-150. 
for the first time ever, that base F-150 is actually going to start at over $30,000. That base XL trim starts at $30,635. And so ultimately what that means is of course the XL at the bottom trim, XLT, the next one up starts at $39,655. Lariat starts at $46,890. King Ranch for $58,025. Platinum for $60,805. And lastly, that limited starting at $72,520. That was all pricing for the Super Cab. There is the Super Crew, of course. If you want a little extra room for your rear passenger, simply add $2,350 to any of those prices. And so next I wanted to touch on the power plants because there are several of them, of course, for the 2021 F-150. And this was the only place where I wasn't allowed to look. Ford at the time of this video, at least, is not allowing people to check out the new engine configurations. But really, there is only one new engine configuration for 2021, but it's a big one. The remaining five engines, yes, there's six different engine configurations for this one. The remaining five though have been carried over from the 2020 model year, including the 3.3 liter V6, 2.7 liter EcoBoost V6, 3.5 liter EcoBoost, the five liter naturally aspirated V8, and the Power Stroke V6 diesel. But the new one that they actually had on this particular F-150 you're looking at right now is the 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 hybrid dubbed Power Boost. And this essentially is the 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6 with the addition of a 47 horsepower electric motor. And so for claims though, for this particular engine configuration, they say it's going to be the best in class horsepower and torque with over 700 miles of range before you actually have to fill up again. 700 miles is quite a long time before having to fill up again. That's absolutely wonderful. And hopefully those numbers do come out that way. That would be amazing. Also Ford is claiming a towing capacity at a little over 12,000 pounds with that engine configuration as well. And of course, all of these engine setups are going to be paired up with a 10 speed automatic. That's every single trim, every single engine across the board. So 10 speed automatic is what I have in my Mustang. I'm perfectly happy with it. So definitely a nice transmission there. But so let me get to some of the class exclusives. Let's go ahead and start in the truck bed of the new F-150 here. Of course, you have what you would expect back there, including a spray and bed liner, tie down anchors, LED box lighting. But one of the things I absolutely love around back here is called a pro power onboard option. It is an option, but essentially lets you use the Ford F-150's engine instead of a generator to charge things like tools, electric bikes, a mini fridge, whatever. 240 volt, 30 amp outlet can be found back there. That is going to come with that new engine setup I just went over there four regular 15 amp outlets. So a lot of power going on back there if you wanted it. But Ford didn't stop there with the F-150. There's tons of really interesting features they continue with, including a C-clamp insert if you wanted to work with perhaps some two by fours in the back. And so there's a little plastic area where you can press that in to insert one side of the C-clamp. And of course the other side is going to be on top, but I found that pretty darn cool. Also, you will find cleats on the side of the lift gate to tie down extra long items perhaps. And it also doubles as a bottle opener on the bottom of those clamps as well. That was pretty darn cool and good thinking by Ford once again. And there is also an optional tailgate work surface back there as well. I guarantee you've never seen this before. Built-in ruler on the actual tailgate itself, a place for pens, a place for a cell phone holder as well. All of this stuff you wouldn't even think to imagine could be part of a truck, but it's so freaking cool that Ford put it on the new F-150. And of course you have your tailgate step option back there as well. I always like to mention that when I review F-150s, it's a $375 option, but it just makes getting into the bed of a truck so much easier. Even if you're fully capable of just jumping up in there like myself, it's still so much easier with that tailgate step option, I will say that. And of course the interior has been completely redesigned as well, including a lockable vault under the rear seats, kind of like the Super Duty has. You guys may be familiar with that. Seats of course can fold up for more cargo space if you needed it. There's also an optional panoramic sunroof that extends all the way into the rear seats there. Bang & Olsen sound system, I love seeing that. It of course is going to be an option on the F-150. Also found some nice details on the rear doors as well. I wanted to show that to you guys. So that was pretty cool that I found that there too. But those details continue around to the front. Let me show you guys this. And so before I even jumped inside the F-150 here and started it up, 
There was an American flag that stood out just below the corners of the air vents there, and it could be viewed from outside the F-150. I loved this detail, and it was such a high-end detail as well. So, of course, Ford didn't have to do that, but I absolutely love that they did. As far as the seats go, they were very comfortable for me. Standard dual glove box. This is one of the cool things about the new F-150 as well. Of course, you have your standard glove box down below, but the upper glove box actually opens via a button just below the climb and control vent there and that's one of the things you probably didn't expect on the f-150 a lot of trucks may have those dual glove boxes but kind of liked how the button to this one is kind of secretive to some degree as well so love seeing that but perhaps my favorite part about the new 2021 f-150 here is going to be the shifter it's the fact that with a push of a button you can fold down the shifter it rotates forward allowing you to fold out the center armrest, which creates a perfectly flat surface for things like eating lunch perhaps, or signing work documents. That's another option you could use that for, but how many other vehicles though, trucks, SUVs, anything out there do you know where you can push a button and the shifter will fold down, allowing for a very practical use like that that is so freaking cool i absolutely love that and of course the front seats you may be familiar with this can also fold completely flat if you wanted to perhaps take a quick siesta on a break perhaps when you were at work so it's almost like you could live in the f-150 it's pretty freaking cool so i love that the seats folded flat but again the fact that the shifter was able to fold down was my favorite part because i don't know how many times i've eaten my vehicle where i wish i had something like that so love that ford put that feature in the new f-150 now let's go ahead and make our way to the tech. Eight inch color touchscreen display does come standard. However, there is an optional 12 inch screen with upper trim levels. That of course is what you're looking at right now. And that comes with Sync 4. And so you guys are probably familiar with Sync 3 at this point, but the Sync 4, what that is going to add is wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay. So you know how you typically have to hook your smartphone up to the F-150 via USB cable? That is gone with Sync 4. It just automatically recognizes your smartphone and therefore where you are able to view navigation up on that 12 inch screen or like and dislike your Pandora songs. And of course, there's a couple other compatible apps up there as well, but I love that it's wireless and a lot of manufacturers are just now starting to do that. So that's a big old feature there as well. And another cool thing about this Sync 4 system is it enables Ford to do over the air updates for your particular vehicle, meaning Ford can add new features or performance improvements perhaps at any given time. This is something that Tesla kind of started and all the other manufacturers Manufacturers are starting to do it now but again I love it because sometimes what Tesla does is add more power to the vehicles over the air at any given time the owner wakes up the next day and they're like oh I get to have more power in my vehicle now because I got an over-the-air update that is what Ford is now doing with the new F-150 I absolutely love that and of course you can check out plenty of other things on this screen there's climate control radio settings there's a factory navigation system available if you wanted to go that route although you don't need it with Android Auto Apple CarPlay these days but also 360 degree mile monitor love that a lot of trucks a lot of vehicles will give you that rear view camera standard that's pretty basic at this point but the 360 degree monitor that is going to be found on the new f-150 as well and that gives you a bird's eye view with a couple different angle options as well so that is pretty darn cool especially if you're towing something or anything like that that's certainly going to help you back up into a parking spot or whatever you want to use it for and before we get to the exterior of the new f-150 of course you have a push button start overhead sunglass holder power rear window and home link control so up to three different garage doors that's always nice as well but as far as the exterior goes there's actually 11 different grill options available for the 2021 f-150 talking about making the truck your own that's a good bit of grill options, considering there's only half as many trim level options. So that's pretty cool. LED headlights up front, LED fog lights, LED daytime running lights. So LEDs all the way around, gives you better visibility at night. Black side steps, of course, trim level badging found on that front fender. And there's a nice front fender design. I like that on the 2021 F-150. A plethora of different wheel options as expected. So quite a few different choices there. LED taillights around back. You got the F-150 embossed into the rear tailgate, a chrome exhaust tip a lot of times truck manufacturers don't add that extra detail so i do like that and of course you got some rear parking sensors around back there as well so you don't run into anything and speaking of safety automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection that is standard across the board even on the base xl trim levels so 
automatic emergency braking standard on all trims absolutely love that so i would imagine this is going to be a pretty safe vehicle once it gets tested goes through ihs all that fun stuff as well so question everyone's asking when is it going to be available the new f-150 is available in the fall of 2020 that's going to be when it's arriving at dealership so keep an eye on your local dealership i'm sure they're going to be getting them in quite soon so at the time of this video that's only a few months away so they should be getting that pretty soon and so but that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel and like i said do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold What's up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the new 2021 genesis g70 courtesy of jack giambavo genesis in york pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and i have actually reviewed this one since it first came out for the 2019 model year when it won motor trend car of the year and so to go along with that another reason you may want to check this one out is it does come with america's best warranty being five years 60 000 mile bumper to bumper 10 year 100 000 mile powertrain warranty which is pretty remarkable giving the engine that comes with this one and we'll get into that in a little bit here three years of complimentary maintenance or free maintenance also a great starting price point comparatively speaking to the other vehicles in this class at least so what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always Let's start with pricing. Let's say the base two liter sedan will start at $36,000 even. Then there is the base two liter sedan with the six speed manual starting at $38,600. And lastly, the 3.3 liter twin turbo starting at $46,200. And by the way, for the base two liter and the 3.3 liter, that does come with either rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. If you wanted to add all wheel drive, simply add $2,000 to those prices. But I will say the six speed is only available in rear wheel drive in case anybody was curious about that but regardless as you guys could probably tell there are two different engine configurations for the g70 first one being a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder putting out 252 horsepower at 6200 rpm 260 pound feet of torque available at 1400 rpm power center rear wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic with paddle shifters or the six speed manual of course zero to 60 time on that one comes in at approximately 6.9 seconds with MPG numbers coming in at 22 in the city, 30 on the highway, taking premium unleaded fuel. And so the other engine configuration being the one we have today, this one being powered by that 3.3 liter twin turbo V6, 365 horsepower, 6,000 RPM, 376 pound feet of torque available at 1,300 RPM. Power once again sent to rear wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic with paddle shifters. And by the way, we will be testing those paddle shifters out in a little bit here, but zero to 60 time on the 3.3 liter twin turbo, 4.5 seconds. That is remarkable. Absolutely amazing. We're gonna do that acceleration test in a little bit as well. MPG numbers for that engine configuration, 17 in the city, 25 on the highway. Once again, taking premium unleaded fuel. And so before we do any of those tests, I did want to mention, there are of course some driving modes located just behind the shifter there. And so when you turn that to the left or the right, you got Smart, Eco, Comfort, Sport, and Custom. Essentially those will adjust things like the shift points, throttle response, steering sensitivity, the suspension settings, and the all wheel drive system engagement. For example, if I were to put it in sport driving mode, that is going to send more torque to the rear wheels, approximately 
80 to 100 percent of the power to the rear wheels as opposed to let's say you're in comfort driving mode where it's simply going to send 60 to 70 percent of the torque to the rear wheel so that of course helping with acceleration so the drive modes actually do change up the driving dynamics of the g70 quite substantially usually in most cars it's throttle response shift points and steering sensitivity and it ends there there's no suspension differences there's no all-wheel drive system engagement differences that is pretty cool that the g70 does offer you that but having said that let's go ahead and put it in sport driving mode here by the way i should also mention it does adjust the gauge setup or the gauge colors i should say ever so slightly so i do have some red hues on the gauge setup that i'm looking at right now but dang it's definitely holding the rpms at a much higher level it's going to give you more power on demand like i was saying but now i'm just going to shut up here for a second and uh let's go ahead and do a quick little paddle shifter test here to start i want to see how quickly they react for us here now let's start with that and then we'll do the acceleration test all right you guys getting out on the road here let's give the paddle shifters a shot wow oh my goodness holy cow all right this wasn't the acceleration test but my goodness you can feel it in your stomach but we'll get to that acceleration test in a couple seconds here but actually paddle shifters surprisingly were pretty darn quick i kind of did not expect that because sometimes with sedans they're not but g70 well done with the paddle shifters at least <laughs> very impressed so paddle shifters do feel very high quality as well it's another one of my pet peeves if they're black plastic ones like the ones i got in my mustang not the best high quality paddle shifters i will say that but in the g70 they are very nice so i do appreciate that but now since we did that let's go ahead and uh let's get the control back to the g70 here let's do a quick little acceleration test and let's have some fun <laughs> oh my gosh I'm, I'm still looking forward to this let's see how quickly we can get the g70 here up to speed all right and here is the straightaway hit it oh my goodness gosh darn you <laughs> i love this car that was that was just wonderful <laughs> i don't know what else to say that acceleration test was a beautiful thing my goodness twin turbo v6 you know what the best part about that acceleration test the twin turbo v6 is warranted for freaking 10 years man that is wonderful so a lot of times you think with turbocharged engines they're not as reliable although consumer reports actually does give a decent reliability ratings but we'll say even a twin turbo v6 you wouldn't think was reliable but genesis has enough confidence though to back that engine up with 10 years of warranty, which I just absolutely love. So thank you, Genesis, for that. This car is absolutely wonderful. Anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so to start up front, you will find 13.8 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 13.4 inch ventilated rear discs. And on top of that, I should also mention, if you were to go with that twin turbo V6, that brake setup is then actually manufactured by Brembo, which is perhaps the most well-known brake manufacturer when it comes to high performance vehicles. So that's a wonderful thing as well. Overall, when it comes to the 60 to zero stopping distance, it actually comes in at 190 feet which is absolutely wonderful and that is definitely a sports car like braking statistic right there so i love that as far as the braking feel goes it's been absolutely fine and actually as i'm coming up to a, a turn here let's just yeah it's perfectly fine having read that number i really didn't think there would be any issues but really there are not there's no brake pedal delay it has a nice firm feel to it so it is as expected in a car like the g70 with as much power as it has so i absolutely love the braking on this thing touching on suspension and handling up front you will find a mcpherson strut front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bar that's all pretty standard at this point but in addition to that there is an adaptive damping suspension if you were to go with the sport pack for the v6 or the prestige package for the four cylinder so both of these you are going to get that adaptive damping suspension which essentially gives you the best of both worlds not only tightens up the suspension during heavy cornering but it actually monitors each shock absorber individually giving you a much smoother ride soaking up the roads imperfections as well so if you wanted a smoother ride and better handling go with that adaptive damping suspension for sure having said that as far as the ride quality goes we do have that sport package here today on the one i have so it's perfectly fine definitely soaking up the roads and perfections absolutely wonderfully and i will say i did not drive one with the adaptive damping suspension last year it is a night and day difference and i was always curious about that i always wanted to drive one with the adaptive damping suspension but really it's such a smoother ride if you get it in the g70 i will say that you can definitely feel a lot more of the roads imperfections without it so 
keep that in mind if you are shopping for a G70. If you want that smoother ride, definitely go with that suspension setup. As far as steering feel goes, it is a noticeably heavier weight if I were to put it in sport driving mode. But I will say not quite as heavy as I would like it, but still heavier than it would be in comfort mode, I will say that. As far as cabin noise goes, this thing is definitely well insulated. Not a whole lot of exterior noise is coming into the cabin. I have the climate control on right now, so you may hear that, maybe you don't. But nonetheless, not a whole lot of exterior road noise. That's nice. Touching on visibility, I can see perfectly fine. The second row headrests definitely tuck a good bit into the seats when those second row seats are not in use. That's definitely a good thing for visibility. And there's a head-up display available with the four-cylinder Prestige package and also the six-cylinder Prestige and Sport packages. So I'm actually looking at that right now. It gives you your digital speed projected onto the windshield so you don't have to take your eyes off the road as much. That's definitely a good thing. It also gives you the speed limit of any given road as well as some safety information. So all of that is a beautiful thing when it comes to visibility. Also rain sensing windshield wipers come standard across the board. So essentially what that is, is when the G70 detects any kind of even mist or rainfall, it's gonna automatically turn on this windshield wiper. So it's just one last thing you have to worry about. So it's definitely a big plus there as well. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and find a nice spot in the woods here. And let's check out the exterior of this brand new 2021 Genesis G70. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2021 Genesis G70 finished in what is perhaps probably my favorite color on the G70 being Siberian Ice. It is not their white. It's kind of a mixture of white and silver, and it looks absolutely amazing. It is a really cool name, too. But anyways, no new changes, really, for the 2021 G70 on the exterior. I think the refresh might be coming on the 2022 model year, in case anybody was waiting for that. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and start up front here on the G70. Full LED headlights coming standard on this one. And of course they do come with the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, they will turn on automatically for you there. One last thing you have to worry about. Also LED daytime running lights also coming standard up front. Headlight housings are actually going to differ dependent upon the package and the trim that you go with. For example, the clear housings are gonna be on that base two liter automatic. Dark housing is essentially on all other trims. And you're actually gonna find some copper accents on the sport package that we have right now. And I'll get a little bit up close here and show you guys that. And there's gonna be copper accents throughout with that sport package as well, I should say that. But dark chrome grill surrounds coming with the sport package. Also, you guys can see that adaptive cruise control sensor located within that front grill as well. It's really well integrated into the front grill. You almost can't even tell that it's there. You can if you get really up close, I suppose, but from a distance, you really can't even tell that it's there. So that is pretty well integrated. And of course, you have this super cool looking Genesis logo that kind of almost has like a flight to it. But anyways, I'm getting too nitpicky. Let's go ahead and make our way to the side of the G70 here. So but now making our way to the side, chrome window surrounds coming with the two liter, dark window surrounds, dark chrome window surrounds, I should say, coming with the 3.3 liter. And that of course continues onto the door handles and some fender accent. You guys can see the fender accenting there. Looks kind of like a boomerang. Again, same concept, dark chrome or chrome accents, essentially. Then take a look at the side mirrors, body colored power just Adjustable side mirrors do come standard. They will be heated with integrated turret signals across the board. You will actually get Genesis logo approach lights if you were to go with the V6 or the two liter elite and prestige packages. So side mirrors also kind of look like they're sitting on a shard of metal. Let me get a little bit more up close for you guys. I think it's such a cool design because it is kind of a shard of metal at the bottom and it kind of just looks like it's sitting on there. So like the design of the side mirrors, taking a step back here looking at the wheel setup now 18 inch multi-spoke alloy wheels coming with the two liter and the two liter elite package 19 inch double five spoke wheels coming with the two liter prestige the v6 base and the v6 prestige and 19 inch black five spoke alloys coming with the sport package that of course is what you're looking at right now another thing i wanted to mention though there is a staggered fitment that comes standard on the 19 inch wheel packages however it is not the same for the 18 inch wheel packages meaning you can rotate the tires on the 18 inch wheel design you cannot on the 19 inch wheel design and so they do this because it gives you more traction better acceleration better handling but downside is you don't get to rotate the tire so i wanted to mention that to you guys just so you know so then make your way to the back of this one shark fin antenna coming standard of course you got your engine badging located on the right hand side of that rear trunk it's going to let you know whether you have the two liter or the 3.3 liter essentially 
H-Track badging. That is what Genesis calls their all-wheel drive system. You know, every manufacturer has a name for it these days. So H-Track all-wheel drive if your vehicle is equipped. LED taillights coming standard across the board as well. And just below it all, a single exhaust outlet with dual tips if you go with the two liter. However, if you were to go with that V6, you have dual exhaust outlets with integrated chrome tips. Love how they're integrated into that rear bumper. Definitely a good look in the back, but do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. So but now since we are around back when it comes to opening that rear trunk it is a power trunk if you were to go with the v6 prestige or sport trim level so that's going to be optional dependent upon the package that you go with but once opened up cargo capacity comes in at 10.5 cubic feet if that was not enough space yes those rear seats do fold down and that will give you a good bit of extra space there then if you needed it Make your way then to the rear legroom that comes in at 34.8 inches. So for reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. So not the most legroom in its segment, but again, for reference, this is how much space I had. Rear center armrest with cup holders also coming standard back there. Rear ventilation also standard. You can actually get heated rear seats if you go with the two liter prestige or the V6 prestige package or sport packages will give you those heated rear seats as well. There's also a 12 volt power outlet back there. Also some LED lighting on the roof there. That is pretty darn cool front seat back map pockets as well. And another cool little feature of the G70, if you were having a little trouble maybe getting out of the rear seats or in, either one I guess, can actually move up the passenger side seat via the buttons on the side of the seat from the back. So no need for the front passenger to actually move their seat after they get out. You can actually do that yourself as a rear passenger by simply just pressing the buttons on the left side of that front seat. So that's pretty cool, pretty convenient feature there to have as well. But so then make your way to the front seats, eight way power, just adjustable front seats with power lumbar come standard. Leatherette finish comes with the two liter base trim level. However, all other trims essentially will give you a full leather finish. Then if you wanted heated seats, simply go with a V6 or the two liter elite and prestige packages. Ventilated front seats come with the two liter prestige and you will actually get quilted Napa leather coming with the V6 prestige and sport packages and also the two liter prestige package. So that of course is what you were looking at right now. The cool thing about that quilted Napa leather actually is you could choose between the gray finish that you're currently looking at for the quilting or there's also a red finish perhaps if you went with a red exterior as well so you got a couple options there too and that gray stitching ties in above the passenger side glove box and some other areas on the doors as well but take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped it is power adjustable if you go with the two liter prestige or the same thing on the v6 side of things it's also heated if you go with the two liter prestige or any of the v6 trims but i will say steering wheel is plenty fine i wouldn't have minded a little bit thicker 10 and 2 grips kind of along the lines of what bmw does perhaps especially for the three 3.3 liter twin turbo v6 thicker grips kind of give you a better feeling of being in control so other than that steering wheel is perfectly fine though and take a look at the startup let me first start by showing you guys the key here you do have your genesis logo on the one side and when you flip it over lock unlock and that button to pop the rear hatch and by the way this is a keyless entry with push button start for the g70 so all i need to do is simply leave the key in my pocket walk up to the g70 no need to take the key out of my pocket once again put my phone on the brake there is a push button start located just to the left of the climate control just underneath of the infotainment screen and so all i'm going to do is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button there and so but then once started up tachometer is on your left speedometer is on your right there is a eh, relatively large i guess digital display front and center which can be controlled by using the steering wheel mounted controls on the right side there and so through that you can check out a bunch of different information including how many miles you have left until you hit empty there's your outside temperature of course your driving modes when you need your next oil change trip a trip b the list goes on there but Having said that, the gauges are all right. However, in Korea, where these cars are made, 
they have a 3D digital gauge cluster that looks absolutely amazing. So I beg you, Genesis, bring that to the US. We want it. It is perhaps the coolest looking digital gauge setup. A lot of companies right now are doing the digital gauges, including Hyundai, actually. Even on their Palisade, their new Elantra coming out. Audi still has the best here in the US, in my opinion. But if Genesis were to bring their 3D digital gauge cluster over here in the US, they would absolutely kill it. So I would definitely love to see that here in the US. But having said that, let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality power sunroof coming with the two liter elite and prestige packages and the V6 here that we have today. Overhead sunglass holder directly in front of that. Suede headliner, this perhaps is one of my favorite parts about the G70, completely changes the feel of this thing. Two liter prestige package gets it and the V6 prestige and sport packages will get that as well. I don't know why I love suede headliners. It just increases the luxury of any car by tenfold. McLaren has it, Lamborghini has it. A lot of really high-end cars always get that suede headliner. And so I do love that the G70 package that we have today here at least has that. So a big fan of that. Home link controls for the V6 Sport only. And those are gonna be found on the rear view mirror there for up to three different garage doors. Aluminum trim details throughout, including around the door handles on the inside here, both in the front and the back. Also just above the passenger side glove box and actually on the handle of the passenger side glove box as well. Love that, usually that's plastic. So I like that Genesis didn't overlook that. Wireless phone charger coming with the two liter prestige package and all V6 trims, that's gonna be located directly in front of the shifter there, it's pretty cool. Also directly in front of the shifter since we're there, 12 volt power outlet, auxiliary port, USB charging port. Just behind the shifter, you have an electromechanical parking brake, two cup holders, and I love the perimeter of those cup holders as well. And that actually did continue into the back. You guys probably saw that on the cup holders back there too so that's pretty darn cool and within the center armrest you do have a usb charging port in there and it's a fairly decent size in there so that's pretty nice as well and again gray stitching or red stitching depending on what configuration that you go with that can be found throughout as well but so then making our way to the tech display eight inch color touchscreen display coming standard across the board bluetooth and audio streaming do come with that android auto apple carplay factory navigation system comes with the two liter elite and prestige packages and every v6 as well so we do have that factory navigation system as well you could check out your climate control settings up there your drive modes and also your radio information as expected. And so when it comes to the sound systems of the Genesis G70, you will find six speakers on the base two liter only. However, every single other configuration for the G70 is going to give you a 15 speaker lexicon sound system, 660 watts. Of course, that's what we have here today. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. Like about me. <laughs> Definitely more than enough bass. That was plenty fine. No issues with that sound system whatsoever. And really, whenever I test out the Lexicon sound systems in Genesis, they always do a wonderful job. So well done, Genesis. Needless to say. Last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display, at least, is when you do put the G70 in reverse, you will find a rear view camera across the board. Surround view monitor or that 360 degree aerial view coming with the two liter prestige package and the V6 Prestige and Sport packages if you wanted to go that route. But as always, that is going to lead us into safety where Genesis kills it. IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus to start, which by the way is the very highest designation given by IIHS. Front side, side curtain airbags, driver's knee airbag as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks back there as well. Tire pressure monitoring system, that's all pretty basic, but Now's the fun part. Also standard on all G70s being a driver attention monitoring system. That's great. High beam assist, adaptive cruise control with stop and go, blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert, which is still optional on a lot of other luxury automakers out there. Lane keep assist, which works beautifully in Genesis and Hyundai for that matter. So that's definitely a big plus too. Four collision avoidance assist with pedestrian detection as well. And in addition to that, the two liter elite package and up is actually gonna give you parking sensors. So it's gonna beep at you essentially if you get too close to an object. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts of the 2021 Genesis G70, 
crazy fast twin turbo V6. And I've actually driven the two liter turbocharged engine as well. There's ever so slight turbo delay unless you keep it in paddle shifter mode. And then you can really alleviate that. I will say that, but the twin turbo V6, man, it will put a smile on your face every time you hit the gas. And it's warranty for 10 years, 100,000 miles. So that's a beautiful thing as well. Love the suede headliner. Again, that's a big one for me. It just ups the luxuriousness, I guess you could say, of any vehicle. This is really a heck of a value as well. When you compare it to its competition and its class, it's essentially all the luxury you want just for thousands cheaper. So you gotta love that as well. As far as my constructive criticism goes for the G70, it was absolutely amazing when it comes out, but there are some things that could probably afford to update at this point. Maybe it'll update it next year, but things like a larger tech display, even their Hyundai Palisade, I believe, has a 12.3 inch tech display i think it is and a digital gauge cluster for that matter as well we still have the analog gauges here that 3d digital gauge cluster would absolutely make this car on a whole nother level here in the u.s i'll tell you that also my last constructive criticism no ambient lighting you get it on the hyundai palisade and other hyundais and i keep mentioning that of course because hyundai makes genesis just like toyota makes lexus honda makes acura and so on so i wouldn't have minded seeing some ambient lighting in the g70 but that's it that's all i got for constructive criticism other than that this is a heck of a value a crazy fun car to drive incredible warranty three years free maintenance so really can't go wrong with the genesis g70 quite honestly but that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold and the bell notification button if you're in a new car truck and suv reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube. And today we are in the new 2021 Volkswagen Atlas, courtesy of Hanover Volkswagen in Hanover, Pennsylvania. Quite excited to be in this one, reason being there are several changes for the 2021 Atlas. Of course, you also have Volkswagen's complimentary maintenance, which is two years, 24,000 miles. And this is essentially Volkswagen's largest three row SUV. So this is gonna be the family hauler. So what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as you can expect, there are several different trim levels for the 2021 Atlas. S trim level starts at $31,545. V6 SE with technology starts at $38,295. V6 SE with technology R line starts at $39,695. V6 SEL, which actually is the one we have today, that one's going to start at $42,295. And lastly, the V6 SEL premium with the four motion all wheel drive starting at $48,995. And so all trims except for that last one there comes standard with front wheel drive. If you wanted to add all wheel drive to any of those first four trims, levels simply add $1,900 to any of those prices. But so as you could probably tell by those trim levels, there are actually two different engine setups available for the Atlas. First one being a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder engine, putting out 235 horsepower, 4,500 RPM, 258 pound feet of torque available at 1,600 RPM, power sent to the front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic, giving you a zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 7.2 seconds with MPG numbers coming in at 20 21 in the city, 24 on the highway, taking regular 
unleaded fuel, save you a little bit of money there. It's always nice. But so then the other engine setup being a 3.6 liter naturally aspirated V6, that one is going to produce 276 horsepower, 266 pound feet of torque. Sit to the front wheels are all wheels through an eight speed automatic once again. Zero to 60 time for that one, believe it or not, a little bit slower than the turbocharged four cylinder coming in at 7.5 seconds. With that BG number 17 in the city, 23 on the highway, again, taking regular unleaded fuel though. But before we do any kind of acceleration test in the 2021 atlas here i did want to mention there are some driving modes and that driving mode dial is located directly behind the shifter driving modes are going to include comfort sport economy snow and off-road adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response steering feel all-wheel drive engagement as well love that and traction and stability control systems as well but those last two though usually aren't adjusted with driving mode so i did want to emphasize that but nonetheless what do you guys say to actually adjust on-road driving mode simply press down the middle button there and we're going to push it over to sport and now we are going to find a straightaway we're going to do a quick little acceleration test here and let's see how quickly we can get the new 2021 volkswagen atlas here up to speed all right you guys i think we found a straightaway in three two rolling start one go It's not bad. Not the quickest thing in the world, but certainly no issues with merging onto the highway. Plenty of get up and go for basically what you're going to be using the SUV for anyways, but it's not going to be as fast as a Golf R. I always like quicker cars, but plenty of get up and go in the Atlas. But to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so this is probably the first thing I noticed when I started driving the Atlas, and maybe not in a good way, but when it comes to the brake setup of the 2021 Volkswagen Atlas, up front you will find 13.2 inch ventilated front discs, in the back 12.2 inch solid rear discs. As far as the braking feel goes before I get to the 60 to zero stopping distance it is very very soft so it's not going to be a firm braking feel whatsoever it's a very soft luxury-esque I guess you could say sometimes people consider soft braking feels a little more on the luxury side of things for me personally as I'm coming up to a stop here I consider a softer braking feel not as good for driver feedback essentially so I'm not always the biggest fan and when it comes to that 60 to zero stopping distance it comes in in 139 feet which quite honestly may be the worst in its class for comparison's sake Kia Telluride comes in at 126 feet Ford Explorer 121 feet Honda Pilot 120 28 feet. Volvo XC90, I remember. I just recently reviewed that. That comes in at 113 feet. So ultimately, as far as three-row SUVs go, typically the luxury ones are going to come in at around 110 feet, so 110 to 120 feet. The ones in the same class of the Atlas typically come in in the 120s, but 139 feet is definitely not as good as the competition. I will say that when it comes to braking and when it comes to stopping distance, but I will say the Atlas does kind of make it up in other ways. I just wanted to point that out though. Touching on suspension and handling, up front you're going to get an independent strut type front suspension with the 27 millimeter stabilizer bar in the back independent multi-link rear suspension 28 millimeter stabilizer bar as far as ride quality goes it is super smooth definitely no issues there absolutely loving the ride quality on the 2021 atlas i'll give it that for sure as far as steering feel goes it does adjust ever so slightly i can tell that when i put it in the sport driving mode so with it in that sport driving mode i actually am a fan of the steering feel it's definitely a little bit weightier than a lot of the other three row SUVs that I drive and they tend to be on the looser side. So ultimately, either way, it's a little something for everybody. You can adjust that steering feel through the driving modes. As far as cabin noise goes, as I'm driving over a bridge right now, it's honestly not bad at all. I have no issues with the cabin noise. As far as visibility goes, perfect. Especially considering the shape of the Atlas, you're absolutely not gonna have any issues with visibility. Really one of the better ones in its class, I would say, when it comes to visibility because of its shape ultimately. Rain sensing windshield wipers also come standard on all trim levels across the board to assist with visibility. Essentially what that is, is when the Atlas starts to detect any kind of rainfall or mist, it's gonna automatically turn on those windshield wipers, kind of like automatic headlights. It's just one last thing you gotta worry about. So that's always nice as well, but, that about wraps up the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this brand new 2021 Volkswagen Atlas. All right, so here she is, you guys. The 2021 Volkswagen Atlas finished in deep 
black pearl. Definitely like it. So anyways, there's a lot of changes for the 2021 model year. So let me just start with them. Starting with updated front and rear fascias. We're gonna focus on the front obviously right now, but actually increases the overall length of the 2021 Atlas by nearly three inches, in case you were curious there. Also new tri-bar front grille. You guys are looking at that right now. Definitely changed for the better there as well and new revised headlight housing. So again, I actually love the new look. To the sides, LED headlights with the automatic feature do come standard, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, they will turn on automatically for you there. LED daytime running lights also coming standard just below that. Fog lights with low speed illuminating corner feature, meaning when you're going around a bend at night, those fog lights will adjust based on your steering angle. Better help illuminating what is around that bend, so that's always a good thing too. Also wanted to mention one of my favorite colors for the 2021 atlas being a really nice racing green exterior color available that is probably the one i would pick if i were to get that it looks so dang good and you can get it with a tan interior it would look absolutely amazing but anyways our line specific front bumper of course is going to come with the r line trim level as expected so let's go ahead and make our way to the side of the 2021 atlas now so now making our way to the side of black roof rails come standard for all non sel trims as far as the sel trims go they will actually come with silver roof rails up top of course you guys can see that right now roof privacy glass comes standard across the board of course you do have chrome belt line molding also coming standard when it comes to those side mirrors they are body colored power adjustable heated side mirrors for all trim levels with integrated turd signals as as well love that matte black side skirts will come standard for all trim levels but the r line because with the r line you're actually going to get body colored side skirts that's actually the look i would personally prefer but having said that with this with this black exterior that we have here today the matte black kind of ties in pretty good with it so i will say that but when it comes to the wheel design 18 inch alloy wheels come with the s trim level 20 inch alloys with the se r line trims and sel trims and 21 inch alloys for the sel premium so also with that sel premium you will get full window surrounds as opposed to just the belt line molding as well so i did want to mention that but definitely looks good on the side let's go ahead and make our way to the back of this one it's up now since we are around back like i mentioned to you guys earlier revised back Back end for 2021 once again for the better in my opinion shark fin antenna up top of course just below that rear spoiler with the integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper of course and led tail lights will actually come standard across the board once again love that do have that atlas lettering spelled out horizontally on that chrome horizontal bar there in the back and just below it all volkswagen would make you think there are chrome dual exhaust outlets but there are not they are fake underneath you actually have tucked away exhaust outlets so don't want to mention that but you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip something now since we are around back when it comes to opening that rear lift gate there of course are a few different ways to go about doing that there is actually a button on the key fob itself that is one way there is also a button on the lift gate itself that is yet another way ultimately it is a power lift gate and you will get a hands-free power lift gate if you were to go with the se trim level and up meaning just kick your foot underneath that rear bumper and it's going to automatically open up if your hands are full for example but once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 20.6 cubic feet behind that third row. If that was not enough space, that third row does fold down, bumping it up to 55.5 cubic feet behind the second row. And with all rows folded, this is where the Atlas really gets it right. 96.8 cubic feet. Let me give you a comparison there. Honda Pilot comes in at 83.9 cubic feet. Hyundai Palisade, 86.4. Ford Explorer, 87.8. So 96.8 is a considerable amount more than the competition in its class. So that I absolutely love about the Volkswagen Atlas here. But nonetheless, there's also a ton of different stuff back there in that cargo area. You got car or tie down hooks you have a tonneau cover you also have grocery hooks back there and there is some in-floor storage actually as well so basically everything you would want back there but make our way to the third row legroom that comes in at 33.7 inches so for reference i'm an even six feet tall this is how much space i have back there did want to mention for those rear passengers they do have rear cup holders back there a little bit of storage and there is rear ventilation they really have their own air vent back there so that's kind of cool so they will definitely remain comfortable if you're in the third row there second row 
legroom comes in at 37.6 inches. Again, for reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. When it comes to that second row, let me mention it now, bench seating or captain's chairs are available. And so the captain's chairs are available for all trims, but the S trim level, but all other trims, you can get it. We actually do, of course, have it today. So that's what that looks like. But heated second row seats comes with the SEL premium trim level. So that's what you're going to have to get to get those. And actually, also for that second row passengers, you have a 115 volt power outlet back there. That's kind of cool. Two USB charging ports so the kids can charge their smartphones or tablets back there. Also a very good thing. Of course, you have rear ventilation. But the thing that I absolutely love the most personally, rear window sunshades. They're a manual rear window sunshades. I love that on three row SUVs because if you have a newborn or a toddler or small kids basically you can pull those up and kind of prevents them from being blinded by those awkward angles when the sun comes into the back of the cabin. So absolutely love that. So that's going to be there for you as well. But to then make your way to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seating comes with the S, 10-way power driver seat with the SE. And with that SE trim level, those seats are going to be finished in a VTEX leatherette and they will be heated as well actually. SEL trim level is going to give you memory settings if you wanted that. And SEL premium is going to add to that full leather seating with ventilated front seats in the front as well. And I will say, my short driving stint today, absolutely no issues with seat comfort. This is one of those you could definitely take on long road trips and be completely fine. It does have lumbar adjustment as well. So that's definitely a good thing there. And take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped right now. Absolutely loving that. I actually have a button for a heated steering wheel on there as well but steering wheel is plenty fine for me make your way to the startup let me show you guys the key it's actually a pretty cool key you have your volkswagen logo on the one side flip it around lock unlock button to pop the rear hatch the times two button that is going to be your remote start which is going to come with the se trim leveling up and to tie together with that push button start also comes with the se trim leveling up so all I am going to do is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just to the left of the shifter there. And so yet another very cool feature on the Atlas. When you start this one up, full digital cockpit comes with the SEL trim levels, of course. Since we have the SEL, we do have that today. Absolutely love that. You will get traditional gauges if you were not to get one of the SEL trim levels, but the digital gauge cluster is absolutely amazing. It's completely customizable by using the steering wheel mounted controls on the right side there. But you can check out basically anything you would possibly want to up there including how many miles you have left until you hit empty which apparently we have 485 that is a heck of a range for a three-row suv let me tell you that Wow, didn't even expect that. Along with your radio settings, Bluetooth information, you can check out your assist systems, average miles per gallon, tons, just about everything you could possibly think of up there is up there. So I absolutely love that as well, of course. But make our way to overall interior quality. Panoramic sunroof comes with the SEL trim levels. That's what you're looking at right now, of course. It is gonna be optional though for the SE trim level and the R-line trim, so you can get it with those if you wanted it. Overhead sunglass holder, also coming standard across the board. Garage door openers are available as well if you wanted them dual zone climate control comes with the s however se trim level it up is going to give you three zone climate control so the rear passengers can set their own climate as well led interior lighting comes standard with all trim levels wireless phone charger with the se trim level and up you will actually get led ambient lighting for the sel premium trim level only wouldn't have minded if volkswagen put that on some of the other trim levels but still glad that it's offered at least on one of them you also get some rubberized storage just above the infotainment display as well you can put some stuff up there and it's less inclined to slide around i suppose since it is rubberized do you like the wood trim detail just above the passenger side glove box it ties onto the doors as well but just in front of the shifter you do have two usb charging ports once again auxiliary port 12 volt power outlet just to the side of the shifter you got your dual cup holders lecture mechanical parking brake as well and a massive amount of storage within that center armrest and yet another usb charging port it is impossible not to stay charged up in the atlas there's so many usb charging ports it's ridiculous but i absolutely love it though and overall when it comes to interior quality it's plenty fine for me i do like the wood accents it's pretty cool i kind of like it. it makes it feel more high end but let's go ahead and make our way to the tech display now 6.5 inch color touchscreen display comes with the s 8-inch color touchscreen display comes with the SE trim level and up. 
either way, you still get Bluetooth and audio streaming, still get Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, meaning if you have a smartphone, simply hook it up to the Atlas. Therefore, you have free navigation through that smartphone, displayed up on that screen, and the ability to like and dislike your Pandora songs, and there's a couple other compatible apps as well. Factory navigation system comes with the SEL trim level and up. Climate control information you could check out up there along with your radio information. And by the way, when it comes to the sound system on the Atlas, six speakers is what you get across the board. That is pretty much the standard sound system for all trim levels. So having said that, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. Honestly, that is plenty fine considering you're probably gonna have kids in the back you don't want to blow their eardrums out anyway so quite honestly a six speaker sound system for three row SUVs really it's plenty fine so plenty of clarity there for what it is it's six speakers but that'll do the trick in the Atlas but so then the last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display is when you do put the Atlas in reverse you will find a rear view camera across the board 360 degree monitor actually comes standard with the SEL premium that is the trim level you're going to want to get if you wanted that so that's going to be there for you too but as always that is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, front side side curtain airbags come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Also standard in the back, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system comes standard, but also standard for all trim levels across the board, a bunch of fun advanced safety features, including forward collision warning with autonomous emergency braking, pedestrian monitoring, blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert. A lot of times that's optional in other manufacturers, so I like that. And the SEL trim levels are actually going to give you a little bit more, including high beam control, road sign recognition, and lane keep assist as well. And so ultimately, when it comes to my final thoughts of the 2021 Volkswagen Atlas, love the redesign. It looks absolutely amazing. So well done, Volkswagen. Actually, when I was filming this video, a couple people walked by and said they absolutely love the look of this thing. So there you go. Definitely a good look to it. Tons of space at 96.8 cubic feet of cargo space. That is well more than the competition in its class, especially for the price range. So absolutely love that about the Atlas. Digital gauges are absolutely awesome. Love that as well. Love the racing green color. I wish we could have had that today, but honestly, this black looks really good too. So I will say that. Constructive criticism of the Atlas. It's not an IIHS top safety pick. So I always kind of look for that. Well below average reliability as well, according to Consumer Reports. And of course, the braking feel is one thing that kind of bothered me ever so slightly on this one as well. Very soft braking feel. Some people actually like that, but it's not going to bring you to a stop as quickly as some of the other competition. I will say that. But that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe and the bell notification button. If you're into new car, truck, and SUV reviews, that is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold. up you guys welcome back to another one if you were new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the new 2022 mitsubishi outlander courtesy of platinum mitsubishi in mechanicsburg pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so this is mitsubishi's three row suv it's been completely redesigned both on the exterior and the interior for the better let me tell you guys and of course to go along with that you have america's best warranty with mitsubishi as well being five year 60 000 mile bumper to bumper 10 year 100 000 miles on the powertrain which is amazing and so in this video i will be testing out and going over everything about this this one acceleration braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip and everything else so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always 
let's start with pricing. So as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2022 Outlander. First one being the ES, starting at $25,795. SE for $28,845. SEL for $31,945. SE Launch Edition, which is the one we have today, starting at $29,995. And lastly, the SEL Launch Edition, starting at $35,345. And so that was all pricing for the front wheel drive. You can add all wheel drive by simply adding $1,800 to any of those prices. And so regardless of trim level that you go with, power plant on the new Outlander will be the same. Powering this one is a 2.5 liter direct injected inline four cylinder. If that sounds familiar to you, yes, it is the same engine you can now find in the new Nissan Rogue in case anybody was curious. But power comes in at 181 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 181 pound-feet of torque coming in at 3,600 RPM, power sent to front wheel or all wheels through a CVT with paddle shifters, which you guys know we will be testing out in a little bit, although it is a CVT, we're still testing it out, but MPG numbers coming in at approximately 24 in the city, 31 then on the highway. But so then before we do any kind of paddle shifter test or acceleration test here in our Outlander, I did want to mention there is a circular dial located directly behind the shifter that is going to be for your drive modes, of course. Drive modes will include tarmac, gravel, snow, normal, and eco, and if if you were to go with the Mitsubishi all-wheel controller, the four-wheel drive on this thing, you will also get a mud mode then as well, which is pretty cool. But nonetheless, they will adjust things like the shift points, the throttle response, traction control, things like that. So having said all of that now, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's just do a quick little paddle shifter test. I'm kind of curious. Since this is a CVT, it is going to kind of be simulated shifting, of course, but I do want to see if they react quickly for us and make sure the vehicle doesn't shift for us as well. All right, here comes the paddle shifter test on our straightaway in three, two, one. Oh, it shifted, dang it. There we go. Eh. It still feels like a CVT, I will say that. I like the simulated gears, that's kind of cool, but you can definitely tell it's most definitely still a CVT. Unfortunately, that might be one of my few criticisms of this car, I'm just not a huge fan of CVTs. They kind of take a lot of the emotion out of driving this thing. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and give back full control to the Outlander here, find yet another straightaway end. Let's test out the acceleration. Let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. All right, and here's a straightaway in three, two, one, go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's definitely not the quickest thing in the world, but that's okay. Who's really going to be racing an Outlander anyways? But yeah, it'll get the job done. But like I said, definitely not the quickest thing in the world. But to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 13.8 inch ventilated front discs in the back, 13 inch solid rear discs. As far as the braking feel goes, it's actually really nice. I haven't had any issues with the braking feel so far in my test drive today. Definitely not a super spongy brake feel as you sometimes do find in SUVs. So I don't mind it. Then touching on suspension and handling up front, you're gonna get an independent strut type front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension as far as ride quality goes it's been perfectly fine i actually haven't had any issues with ride quality when it comes to the outlander i would definitely say it's much better than the previous outlander i had tested so absolutely no issues with ride quality whatsoever i'm kind of impressed there as far as cabin noise goes at higher speeds you get a little bit of wind noise but other than that it's really not that bad it's pretty quiet you guys can probably tell i am driving right now and there isn't a whole lot of exterior wind noise coming into the cabin so well done once again Mitsubishi for that and as far as steering feel goes it's I would say on the looser side but it is to be expected with SUVs but it's really not bad it's pretty much what you would expect for really any three row SUV out there I should put it that way but anyways touching on visibility I could see perfectly fine out the back so 100% no issues there whatsoever and I did want to also mention if you were to go with that SEL launch edition trim level you will actually also get a head-up display projecting your speed and the speed limit onto your windshield so a little better visibility there as well but that about rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior our completely redesigned 2022 Mitsubishi Outlander
All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2022 Mitsubishi Outlander finished in mercury gray metallic, in case anybody was curious of our exterior color name here. But let's go ahead and start up front. Again, this one has been completely redesigned inside and out for the 2022 Outlander. Up front, you will find LED headlights with the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, those headlights will turn on automatically for you there. LED daytime running lights also coming standard on this one. LED fog lights, you guys can see those down below. They will come on the SE trim level and up if you're curious about that. And of course, surrounding those headlights and really all of the lighting, you're going to find some chrome accents as well, which definitely look very good up front. You have some matte gray design towards the bottom portion of that front bumper too, which definitely looks good. And I love how they spelled out Outlander horizontally on the front of the hood there. So anyways, definitely looks like a very upscale design. So I'm a huge fan of the new front end here of that Outlander. But now, Let's go ahead and make our way to the side of this one. All right, so now making our way to the side, silver roof rails coming with the SEL Launch Edition. Rear privacy glass is going to come standard across the board. You guys can see there's some crow belt line molding on the Outlander here as well, which leads its way into the very back with that floating roof line. Also looks very good back there. When it comes to the side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors. They will be heated for the SE trim level and up, and you will get some integrated turn signals. You guys can probably see those as well. Definitely looks good. Did want to also mention though, for the SEL launch edition, you're actually going to get ground logo illumination. So it's gonna project the Mitsubishi logo onto the ground at night. Again, just with the SEL launch edition. So I thought that's pretty stinking cool. But anyways, taking a look down at the wheel setup, 18 inch alloys coming with the ES, 20 inch two-toned alloys then coming with the SE trim level and up. So overall, once again, very good looking side profile to the Outlander, but now let's go ahead and make our way to the back of this one. All right, so now since we are around back of this one, body colored shark fin antenna found on the very top there, just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just below that rear window wiper, do like these taillights as well. They are LED. They look very Highlander-esque, actually, in my opinion, but very good look to the taillights. Of course, you have some Outlander badging. There's some trim level badging in the bottom right-hand corner there as well. Got some of that silver accenting found on the front end, brought to the back end there, so that looks pretty good too. And as far as the exhaust setup goes, let me show you guys. It's actually tucked away underneath. There is a single exhaust outlet, but nonetheless, do believe you guys know what we have to do next then. As always, here is that exhaust clip. So now since we are around back here of the Outlander, did want to mention when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, it is a hands-free power lift gate if you were to go with the SE trim level and up. So that is definitely pretty cool. There is also a button on the key fob itself. That's another way. There's a button on the lift gate itself, and there is a button by the driver's side left knee then as well to go ahead and open it up. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 11.7 cubic feet behind that third row. Of course, the seats do fold down, bumping that up to 33.5 cubic feet behind the second row. And behind that first row with all rows folded, it comes in at 79.7 cubic feet, which is actually pretty impressive for this size SUV. And actually, my 2017 Hyundai Santa Fe, which is a three row, comes in at 80 cubic feet. So this essentially is the exact same size as what I'm used to, which is pretty cool. Maybe that's why I'm digging this thing so much so far but anyways cargo lighting can be found back there there is a 12 volt power outlet back there as well there is a cargo cover as well which i really liked you can also find grocery bag hooks there are tie down anchors and there is a little bit of in-floor storage back there as well which i thought was pretty cool but nonetheless making our way up to the rear leg room that third row is going to come in at 18.7 cubic feet which essentially is less than a ford mustang so not a whole lot of space when it comes to the third row i'm thinking not many people are going to use that third row so for the second row legroom that is actually going to come in at a respectable 39.9 inches which is a dang good bit for reference I mean, even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. Did want to also mention for the SE trim level and up, you will find a phone charging port and a USB charging port back there in that second row as well, which is pretty cool. SEL trim level and up is going to give you three zone climate control, and that's always nice. Heated rear seats are going to come with the SEL trim level and up as well. Rear window sunshades coming with the SEL launch edition trim level, if you were interested in that. 
rear ventilation coming with all trim levels of course and of course with this being a three row suv seven passenger seating if i haven't mentioned it already does come standard on this one being three seats in the middle two seats in the very back and then it's going to give you that seven but making our way now up to the front seats manually adjustable cloth seating coming with the es se trim level is going to add leatherette surfaces and they will be heated front seats then as well for the se sel is going to add a power adjustable passenger seat and driver's seat full leather seating driver's memory settings as well which is pretty cool but i will say we do have the se so to speak the se launch edition to be specific but i love the leather suede combination because i have this in my own car as well i always loved the leather and suede combination that's just my personal preference and that's what we have here in the se launch edition so big fan of that as far as seat comfort goes it might be the first thing i noticed when i got in this one these seats are very very comfortable i will say that absolutely no issues whatsoever in taking a long road trip in this thing of course we got the heated seats there as well so overall when it comes to the seating in the outlander 100 on point without a doubt but taking a look then at the steering wheel because they also killed it when it comes to the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped for the se trim level and up and if you wanted a heated steering wheel you can get it with the sel launch edition trim level only but i will say the 10 to 2 grips everything's bolstered a little bit thicker than you would traditionally find on other three row SUVs out there so for that reason I'm personally a big fan just because of the thicker grip. So well done, Mitsubishi, yet again. Then take a look at the startup. Let me first start by showing you guys the key here. Essentially, you do have all of your buttons located on one side of the key. Mitsubishi logo at the top, lock, unlock, and that button to pop the rear hatch. But essentially, it is all keyless entry with a push button start for every single trim level across the board. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button, which is located just to the left of the air vents there. And so... Once started up, once again, the Outlander is outdoing itself yet again. You will get a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster if you go with the SEL trim level and up. And of course that includes the SE launch edition and the SEL launch edition as well. But that is currently what you guys are looking at and I love it because it is completely customizable. You will get traditional gauges if you go with any other trims below that. But since we have this, I want to show it to you guys. There are steering wheel mounting controls on the left side of the steering wheel. My favorite particular option to really personalize this, there is a little icon called change meter view. And so if you press that, it really gives the opportunity to choose between more of a traditional gauge cluster where you have the tachometer on your left, speedometer on your right, and a bunch of information found in the center portion of those digital gauges but then if you press it again it's my personal preference now because you got the digital speedometer all the way to your right and the tachometer is on your left but it's kind of in this circular display that is unlike any other gauges that i've ever seen so far out there so for that reason I love different and I love that. And of course, you can check out your outside temperature, how many miles you have left until you hit empty. And there is a ton of other information you can check out up there as well. But once again, Mitsubishi, you killed it when it comes to the gauges. I absolutely love these gauges on this thing. But anyways, continuing on to overall interior quality, panoramic sunroof coming with the SE Launch Edition trim leveling up. That's of course what you guys are looking at right now. Overhead sunglass holder coming standard for all trim levels across the board. Auto dimming rear view mirror coming with the SEL trim level and up. Wireless phone charger coming with the SE trim level and up. Well done Mitsubishi for putting that on one of the lower trim levels. That's pretty cool. Three zone climate control coming with the SEL trim level and up. I already mentioned that to you guys. Overall interior quality is nearly perfect. And that's actually pretty darn good from where Mitsubishi used to be to where they currently are now, which is great. You got this carbon fiber look surrounding the power window buttons on the doors. I absolutely love that. You have some stitched leather found just above the passenger side glove box along with this piano black finish located in between the air vents up there as well. Also have some very soft touch material on the doors themselves, which I absolutely love. You usually don't find that either. Of course, you have a USB charging port directly in front of the shifter. Also a regular phone charging port as well and the 12 volt power outlet. Although again, we got a wireless phone charger, so I would probably just use that. There is an electromechanical parking brake, which is pretty cool, just to the right of those drive mode buttons there. There. Just behind all of it, you have dual cup holders, and within the center armrest, there is a little bit of storage there as well. But like I said, nearly perfect. My constructive criticism when it comes to the interior quality, 
And I find this in a lot of SUVs and vehicles, actually. There is this matte black finish just to the right of the shifter surrounding the electromechanical parking brake. That is unfortunately going to get scratched up and leave some marks that will essentially be unfixable. So that I don't like. And also that same material is found just in front of the door handles on the front doors here as well. So besides that, it is dang good without a doubt. The interior quality is a night and day difference between what it used to be. And still it is better than most of its competition, I would even say right now as well. So well done, Mitsubishi, that was very good. But anyways, taking a look now at the infotainment screen, there are two of them. You can get the eight inch color touchscreen display coming with the ES, or if you go with any other trim level, you're gonna get a nine inch color touchscreen display, which is what you guys are looking at right now. Either way though, you still get Bluetooth and audio streaming. You still get Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, even with that ES trim level. So that's wonderful. Meaning if you have a smartphone, simply hook it up to the Outlander. Therefore you have free navigation displayed up on that infotainment screen, no matter what system that you go with. And you can also have the ability to like and dislike your Pandora songs up on that screen. And there's a bunch of other compatible apps as well, but that is pretty cool that even the bottom trim level gets that. Factory navigation system is going to come with the SE trim level and up, although you don't really need it these days. Can actually check out some weather information up there if you wanted to you can check out some stock information you can check out fuel prices and of course your radio settings then as well and so when it comes to the sound systems there's two of them for the outlander there is a six speaker sound system coming with the es se and sel trims then there is a 10 speaker bose sound system coming with both of the launch edition trim levels so therefore that's what we have today so what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and uh, Let's test out the clarity of this one. It just keeps getting better with this Outlander, I swear. That sound system was amazing. Bose, you killed it in the Outlander, I will say that. It's weird how some sound systems sound better in some cars than others. Like I just tested the Bose sound system in a Nissan the other day, Nissan Murano to be exact. And it wasn't anywhere near as good as the one found in the Outlander, which is kind of weird, but kind of cool. So I do like it better in the Outlander. Also, both sound systems are incredibly reliable. I've had them in my cars before. They have never failed me ever. So I'm a big fan of the sound system without a doubt. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen at least is when you do put this one in reverse, you will find a rear view camera, multi-view system coming with the SE trim level and up then, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so first thing I always like to mention, IIHS top safety pick for the 2020 model year hasn't of course been tested yet for the 2022 model, but when it comes to safety, typically it only gets better with time. So I would imagine it would at least at minimum be a top safety pick yet again, if not a top safety pick plus. But anyways, front side side curtain airbags do come standard. Also a driver's knee airbag up front as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks back there, tire pressure monitoring system as well, but also coming standard on this one, forward collision mitigation system, blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, lane change assist and reverse automatic braking then as well. And if you were to go with that SE trim level and up, that's gonna add a decent amount of extra safety included to that, coming with a safety suite known as Me Pilot Assist, which essentially is Mitsubishi's name brand safety package. But anyways, if you were to go with those trims, you will get adaptive cruise control with traffic jam assist, lane keep assist, lane departure prevention, and traffic sign recognition then as well. And so, Overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Outlander, if I'm being honest, the exterior styling is brilliant. It looks absolutely amazing. Interior is light years better than what it used to be. I absolutely love the interior quality actually in this. It's better than most of the competition right now, believe it or not. So that is absolutely wonderful. Rear window sunshade availability is great. We didn't have it on our SE launch edition trim level today, but I love that that's available because typically, with SUVs, you're gonna have some kids in the back and those rear window sunshades are always a big plus, of course. If it were me, if I were to buy this today, I would personally probably get the SEL all-wheel drive just because you do get the 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster like I'm looking at right now. You get leather seating, memory settings, three zone climate control, heated rear seats as well. So that's pretty cool. Also wanted to mention a little fun fact I don't think I mentioned to you guys earlier. The previous Outlander had 66 cubic feet of cargo capacity. This new one, 80 cubic feet essentially 79 point whatever i said but 80 cubic feet that is a massive difference from what it used to be so that's what i'm saying this new outlander is 
basically a completely different breed from what it used to be. So I absolutely love that. It's gotten so much better. As far as constructive criticism goes, besides those gray matte black finishes found right around the shifter there, all the only other thing I could think of is maybe some ambient lighting would be cool to see in this thing. But other than that, this is dang near perfect, believe it or not. So I absolutely love this thing. Let me know what you guys think of the Outlander in the comment section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Feel free to follow me on social media if you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button. If you're into new car reviews, that is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold. and the bell notification button if you're in a new car truck and suv reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold Hey, this is Mike. I'm at Conway Ford in Conway, South Carolina, and I'm checking out the cutting edge of an American tradition, and that is the new Ford products. This is the 2016 Ford Fusion, and the Ford Fusion is a really good option for a lot of people as far as the size of a car and the features of a car, and uh, it's very economical as far as the fuel economy. But, so let's check it out. This one does have 17 inch alloy wheels that are painted in the silver, uh, the same color as the vehicle. And here in the front we have projector tube headlights with halogens powering those. And the styling of the Fusion is, to me, is pretty darn sharp. That whole front end that they have with the, the, the sharp lines on the hood coming down close uh, to that grill there, it kind of look gives it like a airplane or something look to me. And it must have good aerodynamics because it has a highway rating of 36 miles per gallon which is pretty good. Now it does have a 1.5 liter EcoBoost engine and a six speed automatic transmission. And there's gives you an idea of what's on the, the window sticker there. Now it does have the heated side mirrors and has this little section over here to, um, to help you avoid blind spots. Let's take a look at the passenger side. It does have the black interior and Everything's pretty much a, a matte black except for this area here, which is a little bit shiny. You got the power door locks there, power windows. There's a speaker there on the door. You also have a bottle holder and some storage space around it. The seats are really striking when you look at them. They have like a uh, wavy design there in the, in the center with some white stitching and it feels like a micro so, microfiber um, material that the, the seats are made out of. There's the glove compartment. It's pretty massive. Um, it's, got, it's got the compartment there at the top like a little shelf plus you have this uh, net here for quick access stuff. And check that out got some space under there let's take a look at the back seats inside of the back door is the same as the front basically uh, as far as the styling and everything and quality you do have now this seat here is all the way back so you can see that it's um, not too bad on the leg room but not huge now the, the driver's seat is more of a normal position but you can see there's plenty of room now and these back seats do have the center uh, armrest with some cup holders. You 
we've got some vents back here for the back seat drivers plus a power supply 12 volt down there now these seats do fold down just in case you're going to Lowe's or something and you need some extra cargo space and less passenger space you can fold them down and um, put stuff in there just make sure that the seat belt you see it's it's good letting you know you want to make sure that the seat belt is out of the way when you put the seat back up and make sure it snaps in place all right looking at the back you'll probably notice that it has the uh, the single exhaust here but it also has these parking sensors here across the back these round circles and those will alert you if you're backing up too close to something it'll kind of beep at you and get your attention there's the backup camera so you can see exactly what it's actually beeping for and then you have the EcoBoost badge and the SC there There's where you put your gas in. Now it is a capless design, so don't go looking around for the cap that doesn't need one. You just put the nozzle in, put gas in it, and you're good to go. It does have a seal around here uh, to keep stuff out, but, um, but it is also designed to keep stuff out automatically, uh, the, way it's, the way this door is and everything. Alrighty, let's take a look here. Now the fun stuff stuff begins. This is the inside of the driver's door where the where all the important stuff is. So you got your power window controls, your door lock controls are up here, and your side mirror controls there. You just have to choose which side you want, and then you can adjust it here. You can block out the uh, rear windows from being rolled up and down with that button there. And then of course you got the bottle holder and the storage space in the door power adjustments on the driver's seat and you do have some lumbar adjustments here automatic headlamps with um, the, the ability to turn them off you can also have the parking lights regular lights and the automatics portion there here's the dimmer switches here so you can adjust the brightness or dimness of the interior lighting and the dash So let me get the key out so you can take a look at it. Here's the key. Has the Ford oval there. Plus it has your lock and unlock buttons and your trunk. Let's go ahead and look at the trunk now. Oh, I forget. So opening up the trunk, you just take and you double tap this button just like you would uh, double clicking a mouse. It opens up, it gets to that point there, and then all you have to do is lift it up the rest of the way. And you can see it's a massive trunk, especially considering you can fold those seats down. There's your floor mats there in that bag. You have the grocery bag holders there. Or you can also put a uh, cargo net there that's another use for those so this lifts up and then you've got a uh, spare tire donut in there now definitely want to check some manufacturers are not including a spare tire so if um, you're buying a new vehicle nowadays you want to make sure that uh, you're aware of whether it has a spare tire or not You can also access the trunk using that button right there. Okay, so now sitting in the driver's seat, this is a brand new vehicle and it has this film over it and it says only the customer to be removed that. So we're gonna leave it on there. So check this out. Push the button, this little thing flips out. That's the actual key. You can put that in the ignition and start up the vehicle.
All right, so now that we're doing the inside portion, I'm gonna go ahead and move it into the shade to avoid the sunlight causing any more problems. There we go. Let me turn the fan down a little bit. So here's the steering wheel. It is a uh, kind of a grippy steering wheel. It does have a little bit of give to it and um, it has these uh, larger portions here so you can get a good grip and also when you have your thumb there it kind of keeps your hand from sliding up. A whole bunch of stuff here, a bunch of buttons on the steering wheel. So let's get started on that. Your cruise control is set is over here. You can set it, you make sure it's on and you can set it, you can resume and you can cancel there. On this side you have a volume button for your radio so you can turn your volume on, up and down. You can also change to the stations. Now these, these buttons here are also for answering your call and hanging up on the call there. This is a voice recognition button. You push that button and you can uh, say certain commands and um, so let me just show you that. Please say a command. Help. Main menu. Say a device name, like phone, climate, USB, CD, or radio. To get help with a specific device, say the device name and help, like phone help. You can interrupt me at any time by pushing the voice button. Phone is always active, so you can say things like, call John Smith, to hear an introduction to your system. Say voice instructions, for sync support, call 1-877-945-3648 or see the tips available at www.syncmyride.com. Main menu, say a command. Cancel. Canceling. Okay, so you get the idea. There is a lot of stuff that you can use the voice recognition for. It really is a good safety feature as well as a convenience feature because when you're driving along and you can, you know, basically just push that button and say certain commands, and um, instead of you know looking around, trying to change the radio station, that kind of stuff. So uh, I think it's a really good fa safety feature, and there's a little bit of a learning curve as far as learning the commands and stuff, but I think it's well worth it. All right, so here's your gauges here. And um, so basically, you just have a actual gauge in the center, and then to the right and left, you have those screens there. So right now, we're seeing uh, the distance still empty and the fuel that we have in the vehicle which is not much and on the right we're seeing the what the radio is doing which is just the audio is off so using those little screens you see these little touch pads these little buttons right here on the right and left of the steering wheel and they correspond to the um, the screen that's on the left and right so I'm gonna just push uh, scroll down with the arrow just so you can see what happens. It changes to an RPM gauge. It changes that to uh, include, also include the coolant temperature, or you can go back to that mode. On the right, I'm going to scroll, go see, go back, and I'm gonna go into, say, climate, and go into there. And I'm gonna scroll through that, so you can see that I'm adjusting that. And I'm gonna go back out of that, Go into navigation. Okay, so the, this vehicle doesn't have navigation, so it's just showing that it needs to be added. Uh, entertainment, climate. So basically, you get different uh, options there. I'm going to go to entertainment again. So that way, you can set the screen. You can kind of customize it based on your preferences. And then you've got two customizable screens, which is pretty cool. All right, on this side you have a turn signal, you also for your dimming your headlights. On that side is for your windshield wipe washers and, and wipers. All right, over here is an eight inch touch screen. And like I said, it does have this, uh, this film over it. So, you know, just ignore the, the, the film. Uh, hopefully you could see it pretty good. Basically there's your climate control there. Now pushing the home button I just want to show you there's climate on this corner entertainment phone and um, the nav uh, if you had navigation installed it would uh, be on that corner so it's real easy 
to just the four corners there. I'm going to go into the phone and once Search you're... Search for sync on your device and select sync once it is found. Yeah, there's no phone paired. But once you did uh, have a phone paired in there, you'd be able to see the contact, uh, contacts and recent calls and all that good stuff. Uh, your entertainment, Seven this will be the, the radio. You do have Sirius Satellite Radio. You have a CD player. You can also play music through a USB device. There's all kinds of different um, uh, ways of playing music through this uh, sound system. Let's go back home, and then let's go to climate, and then we're back to that screen we saw before. So it's really easy, uh, simple to use. You've got your four corners, four different um, you know topics, and then you can go into more depth into each topic. And then you can always go back to the home screen by pushing that button. There is some settings that you can change, but I'm going to keep it simple for you. CD player is there, right in this place here. Your volume control is there. Tune through the stations or your track. Eject the CD, change to the tracks there. Now this has a dual zone climate control, so the passenger can adjust there, separate from the driver. And you got your, um, your rear defrosters and your front defrosters. You also have uh, an automatic setting to where you can just set the temperature, push auto, and just roll with it. Now, under here is a, a pretty neat little storage area. And it does have a, let's see if you can see that. It does have a power supply there. So you can put your cell phone in there and plug it in, let it charge. And it's out of the way, and you just use it through the, uh, the Bluetooth system. That's one um, possibility of using that space. But I like the way you can kind of reach in there and, and you know access the stuff. That's a really cool feature. So here's the shifter, and I'm going to go ahead and put it in reverse to show you the backup camera. So that's a really clear image, and it's slightly uh, it's distorted. The reason why is because it's a wide-angle view camera lens back there to get you the, the, the largest view of behind the vehicle. So the reason why it has those lines is to let you know an estimated trajectory of the vehicle as you're backing up and the size of the vehicle. So if I turn it to the right, the steering wheel, I'm turning it now, you see those lines move uh, to kind of let you know you're going to be going in that direction when you back up. Now it is a an estimate, so it's, you know don't just put it in reverse and floor it and go backwards relying 100% on those lines, but it just it gives you a general idea of how wide your vehicle is going to be as you back up and what direction you're going to be going as you back up looking at that screen. So I can continue on with the shifter, go down the neutral, I can go down the drive. Now I also go down to sport mode. So um, sport mode will focus the vehicle on performance um, a little bit more than you know economy. So that's what that's for. You can also change gears using these buttons here. Um, so plus, and let me show you right here. When I push the button, it changes from one to second gear. But if you keep pushing it, it's not going to let you go any more um, than it's not going to let you go out of a specific range because the vehicle is designed to the engine is designed to run at a certain RPM. So um, you know, for your benefit. So basically, that's what that does. Now it's useful if you're going downhill and you need to downshift a little bit to get some more engine braking. Um, to avoid using your actual brakes, um, that, that's a really handy thing to have. This is your parking brake. Uh, it is an electronic parking brake. So basically, you can pull it up to, to in, initiate the uh, parking brake. And basically what it does is squeezes the um, brake rotors and keeps the vehicle from moving. Just as exactly what it does when you push the, um, the brake pedal. Now this is electric, so it's different from the hydraulic system uh, that that you normally happens when you push the brake pedal. So it is a like a backup system, and you'll notice here it says brake. Now I'm going to push it down, and it releases the brake, and the light goes off. There's your cup holders. One is a little bit deeper than the other to accommodate different cup sizes. Here's your center ar armrest here, and it also is a. Um, whole bunch of storage area storage place it does have this little tray that you can take out and dump it and um, it is kind of rubbery on the inside of that tray it's pretty neat so in here you do have a power supply 12 volt 
You also have a USB and an SD card input. And so therefore, um, so like say the navigation, they plug in an SD card in there and it will install the, uh, the navigation into the system. From what I understand. All right, so looking here the rearview mirror that's just kind of the standard um, style that flips up and down like that you got these lights here on both sides if you need like a a quick light for something you can also turn them all all on like that uh, you can turn off the um, this is for turning off the rear windows like say if you if you don't want the rear windows to roll up and down I'm pretty sure that's what that's for of course, you can turn to make sure the lights don't come on or have them on like that. The place to put your shades is here. It is padded on the inside. You also have uh, visors with mirrors and lights, which is cool. Same thing on that side. All right, let's take a look at that little engine. It is a, uh, a small displacement uh, engine, but it has plenty of power. The, um, the little latch is right here to the far right. So usually they're in the middle, but this one's to the far right. So there you have it, 1.5. EcoBoost engine, four cylinder, inline four. It's covered up with plastic, of course, most of them are. So you get to see a little bit of metal, at least you get to see the belts and stuff. But, anyways, there you have it 2016. Ford Fusion SE at Conway Ford, Conway, South Carolina. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments. Also, if you have anything to add or anything I skipped over or got wrong, please leave that in the comments as well. If you're interested in one of these vehicles, uh, Conway Ford will be glad to help you. They're in Conway, South Carolina, which is very close to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And I know a lot of people go there on vacation. So if you're interested in anything, uh, like this let them know I'll leave the uh, a link to their website and you can email them you can set everything up before your vacation and come down and visit them and drive home in a new car but anyways uh, appreciate you watching if you could like subscribe to my channel and and share with your friends and um, that's about it thanks for watching see you next time Boldly styled, with acres of space inside and a commitment to quality that will surprise many, Peugeot's 407 is that rarest of commodities, a big Mondeo-sized French car you might actually spend your own money on. With some great diesel engines and a brilliant SW estate model, it's a class act. No market category in the industry has as densely populated a crop of high quality products as the medium range Mondeo sector. Renault's Laguna, Ford's Mondeo, Citroen C5, Mazda 6, Vauxhall's Insignia, all are brilliant cars. And it's against rivals such as these that Peugeot's 407 must square up. Now, that's a big ask for a car that's been around since 2004, but to help it along, this distinctive French cruiser has been treated to a life-giving transfusion of extra equipment and styling revisions. In its favour uh, is tight pricing, strong equipment levels, and impressive range of all diesel engines. It also helps that to our eyes, the uh, 407 SW is still the most distinctive and attractive estate car out there. 
407 has long been regarded as a mile muncher par excellence that also has the ability to entertain. Still, if you want something that's really sporty in the medium range segment, there are other rivals that are probably a better bet. But what the 407 can deliver is big car feel and big car features at a relatively modest price. The engine range, though now all diesel, is usefully diverse and well suited to the kind of demands that likely owners are going to be making of their cars. Now under the bonnet, proceedings open with a 1.6 litre, 110 brake horsepower HDI diesel. That sits just below the engine that I'm trying here, uh, an HDI with 140 brake horsepower and 2 litres in size. Uh, just above that sits a, a 2.2 litre HGI with 170 brake horsepower. Now all of these three come with uh, FAP diesel fuel particulate filters and uh, manual transmission. But if you want an auto box, there's a choice of two. There's a four cylinder 136 brake horsepower unit or the top of the range 2.7 litre HGI V6. Uh, if you really want to be alpha green, there's a, a two-litre Bioflex engine available that comes uh, that runs on E85 fuel. Now, as I've already suggested, the car doesn't feel as planted or responsive on the road as the sportiest of its rivals, but buyers who prioritise ride comfort could easily be persuaded. This car rides poorly surfaced tarmac very well and is a relaxing drive on the motorway where it displays high levels of refinement. The engines keep uh, noise levels in the cabin down, as does the car's slippery shape. Safety is a strong point with a clever standard ESP stability control system that also looks after the anti-lock brakes and the emergency brake assist system that gives you maximum retardation in emergency stops. It also uh, looks after the uh, brake force distribution system to make sure that there's stopping power to the maximum on each individual wheel. Now, up to nine airbags can be specified for optimum protection, twin front, side, curtain airbags, both sides, front and rear, and even an airbag in the steering column. Just to make doubly sure, there's a device called an impactor built into the chassis, which anchors the engine to the subframe so that it doesn't get pushed into the passenger cell in the event of a crash. Now this is in theory a facelifted Peugeot 407, but you'd have to be a real brand anorak to notice the changes. In case you are, I'll tell you that the front uh, grille section has been redesigned, the bumpers are restyled front and rear, the back bumper has a diffuser style insert at its base, and the rear light clusters have been restyled too. That's about it. Still, not much needed doing to this distinctive looking car, a design that looks utterly stunning from some angles, but slightly unusual from others. What you can't argue with are the stylish yet futuristic looks of the SW Estate version. For those of you used to uh, estates of this class being effectively hatchbacks with backpacks, incorporating all the aesthetic elegance of a conservatory mounting your vehicle, it all comes as a very welcome change. Now even if you habitually carry quite a lot of stuff round with you, you might not necessarily need the SW Estate version. As you can see, the uh, boot for the saloon model I've got here is pretty large and you can extend it still further by folding forward the seat squabs to create uh, a loading area that's actually very big indeed. You've also got this useful luggage net to stop uh, loose items falling around during spirited cornering. But if all that's still not enough, then the SW Estate adds 87 millimetres onto the rear overhang here to create a loading area that's 1700 millimetres long and never less than 1100 millimetres wide. Now inside, Peugeot has gone large with piano black finishes. This lustrous black plastic uh, is featured in plusher models like this one and adds a touch of class to the proceedings. Now to be quite frank, that was needed thanks to the presence of things like these uh, indicator stalks that uh, are borrowed from cheaper Peugeot and Citroen models. The centre console with its cluster of little buttons always looks a little busy, but models with satellite navigation get a very slick system that you can see here. Now, all of these cars' mainstream rivals sit in the 17 to 26,000 pound bracket, and the Peugeot 407 is no different. This car is available in saloon, SW Estate and coupe body styles. 
and it certainly seems to present a strong value proposition, which is just as well in the light of the fierce uh, competition it faces in its sector. The 407's always been one of the better equipped cars of its type, and every model features remote control central locking, electric windows, a leather coloured steering wheel, climate control, a trip computer, and an ultrasonic alarm. While outside, you get body colour for the bumpers, the mirrors, the side mouldings, and the door handles. Now, Peugeot dealers are open to sharpening their pencils cost-wise with this car, which means that you could end up getting yourself an entry-level version for pretty much the cost of a decent family hatchback. If you want a recommendation, then I'd say that the 2.0-litre HDI 140 version that I'm driving here looks a decent pick with a combined fuel consumption figure of 49.5 miles to the gallon and uh, an emissions figure of 150 grams per kilometre of CO2. And both those are very competitive figures. Go for the punchier 2.2 litre HDI 170 and there's very little penalty in terms of fuel consumption which is 46.3 miles to the gallon. But emissions do rise to 160 grams per kilometre of CO2. The uh, 2.7 litre V6 HDI certainly makes all the performance numbers, but uh, fuel consumption falls to 33.6 miles to the gallon, and it's an insurance group 15. A CO2 emissions figure of 223 grams per kilometre of CO2 will also see it struck off many company car drivers list too. In order to succeed in the medium range Mondeo sector, a manufacturer must bring something different to the party. And that's exactly what Peugeot has tried to do with this 407. It's boldly styled and is perfectly at home on the long journeys that it's typically asked to perform. No, it's not the freshest face in the sector, but it's priced relevantly at a level that will keep it competitive for a few years yet. Assuming you get the right price, serious downsides are few. Yes, the centre console is a little busy, and the sporting side to the handling that some buyers look for, well, it isn't really present. Plus, the penalty for that swooping roof line is very slightly restricted headroom in the rear. But otherwise, uh, the 407 gets a, a, a really uh, favourable report card with a strong range of engines, excellent safety levels, good equipment, and a really lovely ride. Plus, the SW Estate version is uh, one of the most distinctive uh, load carriers around with genuine presence. Overall, then, a French connection that's still well worth considering. <laughs>